welcome to this daily service. Thank you for joining us today. The ascended Lord Jesus is ruling over our world, and although he's in heaven, he meets with us as we draw near to him. Let's read together these verses from Psalm 24. Lift up your heads, you gates. Be lifted up, you ancient doors, that the King of glory may come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, you gates. Lift them up, you ancient doors, that the King of glory may come in. Who is he, this King of glory? The Lord Almighty. He is the King of glory. This week we're looking at Paul's prayer to the church in Ephesus. So let's read part of it together. For this reason I kneel before the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth derives its name. I pray that out of his glorious riches, he may strengthen you with power through his spirit in your inner being, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. Our homes are really special places. They're the centre of our family life. It's where our stuff is and how we have arranged it and what it says about us. And our homes are personal. As you come into someone's house, you get to know them better. They open up, they're a bit more vulnerable. We can be intimate with them. In these verses from Ephesians chapter 3, we overhear Paul pray for the church. He prays that God, through the Holy Spirit, would strengthen them with power in their inner being. And now he prays a parallel prayer, that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. So what does Paul mean? Because it's true that Christ already dwells in our hearts from the moment we became a Christian. Whenever we put our trust in the Lord Jesus, he comes and lives inside of us. But Paul's not referring to that. He's referring to Christ's continual presence with us at the very centre of our lives. That word dwell means to permanently live in a house. Jesus doesn't treat us like a hotel, staying for one or two nights and then checking out, not bothering even to unpack, but then leaving. He doesn't treat us like rented accommodation, staying for a year or two and then leaving whenever the contract runs out. Now Christ dwells in our hearts. He's always with us. He makes our hearts his home. And he's in our hearts. He's at the very centre of our lives, the seat of our thoughts and emotions and wills, in our inner being. And this Jesus is the Christ who's risen and ascended, high over every power and authority. And when he lives in us, he's always with us. He never leaves us. We're not alone. He strengthens us. Out of his glorious riches, he gives us the grace we need. And he rules us. He's the one in charge. We obediently follow him. And he transforms us. He shapes our desires and loves. He changes us from the inside to make us more like him. And so Paul prays, may that, may that Christ dwell in our hearts through faith. When we moved back to Oxford almost three years ago, a very good friend of ours came round to visit us. And as he was leaving, he dug in his pocket and he pulled out a key. Okay, it was a bit smaller than this one. But he said to us, here's my key. Here's the key to the front door of the house. Come on in any time and watch TV. He knows that we love live sport, but that we don't have a TV of our own. So he said, come on in and make yourself at home. And so he's not surprised whenever he comes into his living room and finds my son and I sitting there early on a Saturday morning watching rugby together because he's given us 
the key. Christ dwells in our hearts through faith. As we trust him more and more, he makes our hearts his home. As we give him the freedom of our hearts, he changes us, transforming us from the inside out. And so today, having opened the door, having given Jesus the key to our lives, let's join with Paul in praying that Christ would dwell in our hearts through faith, that he would be at the very centre of our lives. Let's pray now, and let's begin our prayers by confessing our sins. Together, Lord God, have mercy on us, according to your steadfast love, and in your abundant mercy blot out our transgressions, cleanse us from our sin, create in us a clean heart and life, and continually renew a right spirit within us. Amen. Heavenly Father, thank you that this is a prayer that you love to hear and answer. Thank you that through Jesus' death and resurrection, you forgive us and cleanse us and renew us. And with Christ dwelling in our hearts, enable us to live for you today. Amen. Let's take a moment to bring to God those we love, who we struggle to love, and who we're concerned for. A prayer for those weary and alone. O Lord, you who entrusted your mother to the care of your beloved disciple, and who promised not to leave us as orphans, but instead to provide us your very own body and the care and comfort of your spirit, be with all who feel afraid and alone this day. Care for the least of these in our community and grace us to be your body in word and in deed, bringing your word of peace to the fearful and the friendless. We pray this so that we might behold your glory and praise your loving kindness in the name of the shepherd who walks with us through the darkest valley. Heavenly Father, enable all to walk in the way of life today, faithful to what you have entrusted to us for this day, no more and no less. Help us not become anxious over the things that we cannot control, but instead receive your grace to face these things trusting in you. And let's conclude our prayers by saying together these words. Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine, according to his power that is at work within us, to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations, forever and ever. Amen. Our song today is, Yet Not I, But Through Christ in Me. So let's sing it together.
as you go from this daily service, may Christ dwell in your hearts through faith. May God bless you today.